Hey everyone, Will here. In this video we're going to take a look at spectral analysis and resynthesis. By the end of the video you'll understand better what both those things are as well as a few other terms that often come up when dealing with spectral information. Kimi users will have the added benefit of being able to follow along step by step as we analyze a sample that's right in the Kima Sound Library. Friendly reminder if you're new here to get involved in the dialogue I welcome your questions and comments below and please subscribe. Let's get started. I'm gonna go to the tools menu in Kima, spectral analysis. It's gonna give me this dialogue box here and the first step is to choose the sample that we want to analyze. Inside your Kima 7 folder I'm gonna choose Sets of samples, Tobias Enhus, Tobias Metallic Chord, the Shea 19. And this is uh, going to yield encouraging results. So uh, we'll start with this a short, short percussive file here. Hit next. And then Kima is going to coach us through what we should do or a good way to get a, a quality spectral analysis. Essentially what we're going to do is uh, figure out which setting, settings here make it so that the resynthesis sounds as close to the original sample as possible. And let's understand what this resynthesis phase is. This is the point at which we're no longer hearing the original sample and instead a bank of sine wave oscillators whose frequency and amplitude envelopes are controlled by the analysis that we're doing on this sample file. So let's check this out. Cool. Now as it tells you over here, you, you have to make some sort of compromise between time and frequency. Sort of a teeter-totter. One, as one gets better, the other gets a bit worse. Right now, what this is telling us is the sound we're hearing is not the sample. Instead, it's a bank of 252 sine wave oscillators whose, again, frequency and amplitude envelopes are controlled by the sample. That's sounding pretty solid, so I'm going to move on, hit next. And for now, that's actually all I need to do. Create Spectrum file. This is a stereo sample, but I'm going to go ahead and just do a mono mix, keep things simple for now. Kima is going to self-name it here, which is pretty cool, telling us what we chose and uh, I've got a sample folder here of uh, Bechet Spectra, almost like I did this once or twice before I'm making the video. So I'll go ahead and save it there. And now it's going to analyze that file, generate a spectrum analysis, and then also a galleries window, which we'll see. This gallery window can be a cool area to go in and explore if you want to hear some uh, potential uses for the Spectrum file. For now, to keep things easy, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And then let's just check out a few things within this uh, Spectrum file. So the first thing you notice is that you've got some colors. And then as you kind of hover your mouse around here, you can see a bit more information. The first thing you notice in the top left corner here says tracks. So you might have heard of something in a spectrum file known as a track. Those correspond to the oscillator. So if I go all the way to the top here, we had 252 sine wave oscillators. Okay, And then if we look at any point in time, all these tracks going up and down, that's what's called a frame. So up and down all across the tracks is called a frame. And then if we look at a certain set of samples, 
common common uh, window is 512 looks like this something like this that would be a spectral window so if you've heard those terms that's uh, that's what they are we have these colors which correspond to the energy and the frequency so the brighter green has the most energy in the amplitude envelope and then the blues purples and reds and that makes perfect sense as you're looking at the spectrum display there uh, and you see the sound decaying that's the progression of colors you can also tell that this sound has a lot of information at the beginning and then it dies off so the higher frequencies towards the top of the analysis die off and then down here lower frequency and this is a decay of the reverb that we hear um, so this this graph or analysis is in line with what we hear uh, when we play it back all right so let's let's see we, uh, a couple of things that we can do with this now i'm going to get a prototype command b sum of signs double click in both of these parameter fields I'm going to put the sample or the spectra we just extracted actually here all right and then let's go over a couple of these parameter fields so this on duration if you hover there you can read about it is essentially saying how long it's going to take to read through this these analysis files so it's going to be controlled by rate in our virtual control surface which we'll see here as a fader in a moment and then the other one we're going to look at is interval which as we can see is in the frequency parameter field so that too is going to show up as a hot value now one thing to to make note of that's a takeaway here is that with this spectral analysis now we've separated time and frequency so they're no longer contingent or influence each other we have the ability to slow the rate of playback or speed it up without affecting affecting the frequency and we have the ability to change the frequency without changing the duration of the file. So let's hear what that sounds like. So if I leave this rate unchanged, but I just want to change the frequency. You can hear that it's the the interval here the frequency is not affecting how fast this plays back now let's do the opposite let's change this and So you can hear now that we're changing the rate at which we read through the analysis file, but that is not affecting the, the frequency we hear. And just as kind of a final comparison, if we were to open a sample prototype and put in our Bache 19, and then put right here let's hear this so you can hear how 
when we change the rate of playback, we read through the f samples faster, that also results in a higher pitch sound. And when it's slower, it's lower. So in here, they're connected, they're married time and frequency, you cannot change the frequency without adjusting the time and vice versa. Here we've separated them, made them independent of each other and so we've opened up our options. There's a myriad variety of things we could do uh, including a morph which is why there's more than one analysis file here. Um, and then we could play with these parameters but that's a good starting point for understanding uh, spectral analysis and, and, and resynthesis or the point at which we reconstruct that sound out of some amount of sine wave oscillators. So hopefully that gives you a good introduction or just get your feet wet with the process at least now you know what a spectral analysis is and a couple things that we can do with it as well as what resynthesis is and there's going to be a lot more to come where we're going to explore these in more detail and more examples but this will give you a good uh, base understanding so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video